This video is brought to you by Captivating History. In 330 CE, Emperor Constantine I, who had reunited the Roman Empire, moved the Roman capital from Rome to Byzantium. The city was renamed Constantinople until it eventually became Istanbul in 1930. The Byzantium Empire was classed as the eastern half of the Roman Empire, and this empire outlasted its western counterpart for over 1,000 years. After the fall of the Roman Empire, the Bishop of Rome, known as the Pope, continued to reside in Rome. The end of the empire invited many interferences by the Gothic kings who influenced the selection of the popes. On Christmas Day, 800 CE, over 400 years after the collapse of the Western Roman Empire, Pope Leo III named the Frankish king Charlemagne as Emperor of the Romans. The act was controversial, as Empress Irene had been the head of the Byzantine Empire, which was essentially the Roman Empire rebranded for the past 20 years. Several factors have formed a chasm between the Roman popes and the Byzantine Empire. Specifically, they argued the theological issue that the popes placed the Father, God, and the Son, Jesus, on equal footing, while the Byzantines did not. The more pressing issue was that the Byzantine Empire thought of the popes as merely the bishops of Rome, whose authority was equal to the bishops of Constantinople, Jerusalem, Alexandria, and Antioch. On the other hand, the popes viewed themselves as having spiritual supremacy. This divide came to a head, literally, in 800 CE, when King Charlemagne knelt to pray after Christmas Mass in St. Peter's Basilica, Rome. Pope Leo III placed a golden crown upon his head and cried, To Charles Augustus, crowned by God, the great and peace-giving emperor of the Romans, life and victory. The Pope viewed this coronation as a rebirth of the Roman Empire. Historians are unsure whether Charlemagne knew of the Pope's plans or not, but whatever the truth, he accepted his new role without hesitation, as did his subjects. Charlemagne had made a name for himself as a warrior king and a fierce advocate of Christianity. He was driven by a desire to unite Europe under his rule and being named the Emperor of the Romans must have suited him nicely. Charlemagne's thirst for power was never quenched. He died unsatisfied with his vast empire, called the Carolingian Empire, that encompassed France, Germany, Belgium, Switzerland, the Netherlands, Austria, and parts of Italy. In Byzantium, they were understandably angered by Rome's popes using the name Emperor of the Romans, as they took it as a direct challenge to their power. But after deposing Empress Irene, they continued as normal, refusing to accept the authority of the new Emperor of the Romans. In the West, the title of Emperor of the Romans was passed down through the Carolingian family but was weakened when, 25 years after Charlemagne's death, his empire was divided between his grandsons. The title languished and was contested by the Italian rulers until the last Italian claimant died in 924 CE. A little under 40 years later, Otto I revived the role. Otto was the son of Henry I of Germany, also known as Henry the Fowler, not because he was foul-natured, but because he was fixing nets used to catch wildfowl when he was told he would be king. While some historians see Charlemagne as the first Holy Roman Emperor, others cite that the empire started with Otto. Otto was elected as king by German dukes in 936. Otto's path to becoming the Holy Roman Emperor was, in part, laid by an offer from an intriguing young woman. At 15, Adelaide of Burgundy had become Queen of Italy after she was married to Lothair II, who ruled Italy alongside his father. When Lothair's father died, an old rival, Berengar, returned after hiding out in the court of King Otto I following a failed rebellion. Historians believe that Berengar poisoned Lothair in a quest to assume power. He attempted to force the widowed queen to marry his son. But Berengar had underestimated the temperament of young Adelaide, who knew that the crown was rightfully hers. Berengar imprisoned Adelaide, but Adelaide was not that easily detained. With the help of a priest she knew, she tunneled her way to freedom and escaped to Canosa Castle, where she began to formulate a plan to regain her position as monarch. She had heard that the powerful German king, Otto I, had recently lost his wife and decided to arrange her own marriage this time. Adelaide's reputation had preceded her, and Otto I took his army into Lombardy and married her, becoming king of the Lombards as well as of Germany. 
King Otto then left Berengar to rule Italy as a vassal state. However, this was not the end of Berengar's power grab, and in 960, he started to attack the Papal States. Pope John XII appealed to Otto for help. Otto defeated Berengar and imprisoned him, and as repayment, Pope John XII crowned Otto as the new Holy Roman Emperor in 962. A formal treaty was drawn up, called the Privilegium Ottonianum, making Otto I the first formal Holy Roman Emperor. Many historians cite this as the official start of the Holy Roman Empire. However, unlike previous emperors, Otto I was not seeking world domination. He also did not wish to challenge the legitimacy of the Byzantine Empire. The empire in the West was not nearly as encompassing as Charlemagne's and instead was simply the unification of Germany and Italy. Their empire was by no means Romanized and had no aspirations to be so. The Ottonian dynasty integrated Byzantine royal blood into their lineage when Byzantine princess Theophanu married Otto I's son, Otto II. During their reign, these dynastic rulers managed to further expand their empire when they incorporated the Duchy of Bohemia, now a part of Czechoslovakia. The Ottonian dynasty continued to rule until 1024 CE, when the last male heir, Henry II, died childless. The title of Roman Emperor was then passed to a new family, the Salians. In 1027, Conrad II, great-grandson of Lutgard, was crowned the Roman Emperor, and the empire began to be called the Holy Roman Empire. The Salian dynasty added Burgundy to the Holy Roman Empire and reasserted Germany's power in Italy. In 1040, the emperor's designated successor was given the title of King of the Romans until his coronation then started a period of conflict between the popes and the emperors concerning who held the true power. Was it the emperor or the pope? While the popes had chosen and crowned the emperor, the emperors started to depose the popes that they disapproved of and installed ones that were their allies. This interference led to numerous anti-popes who were opposed to the recognized Pope of Rome. It wasn't until 1122 then an accord was reached between the Holy Roman Emperor Henry V and Pope Calixtus II. The Concordat of Worms limited the Emperor's influence on religious matters, but this didn't stop future emperors from trying to influence the papacy. The Salian dynasty ended when the last male heir died childless. The next family to rule the Holy Roman Empire was the Hohenstaufen, also known as the Stouffer dynasty. Under the Stouffer dynasty, the Holy Roman Empire ruled more territories than ever before. During the 13th century, the Holy Roman Empire extended from the Italian Isle of Sicily to the southern border of Denmark. The first of this line was Frederick I, nicknamed Barbarossa due to his big red beard. Barbarossa had inherited a title that had been diminished by years of fighting between emperors and popes. While the few German kings before him had claimed the title of Holy Roman Emperor, they were never crowned as such. Frederick Barbarossa had demonstrated a penchant for warfare, and Pope Eugenius III signed the Treaty of Constance in 1153. Frederick swore to maintain the papacy's position and not concede any Italian lands to the Byzantine Empire. On June 18, 1155, Pope Adrian IV, the successor of Eugenius, fulfilled his end of the bargain and crowned Frederick in Rome. Frederick took this new title seriously and wanted Italy back under German control as it had been during the time of Charlemagne and Otto. After many campaigns into Italy and fraught relationships with several popes, Frederick Barbarossa signed the Treaty of Anagni in 1176. In 1177, he acknowledged Alexander III as the true pope and received the kiss of peace. He then arranged for his son, Henry, to marry the Queen Regent of Sicily to secure his lineage in Italy. Henry was chosen as the King of Germany in 1169 and upon his father's death, he took over control of the empire. While he would be a successful leader, his son, Frederick II, would be referred to as Stuper Mundi, Wonder of the World. Frederick II was only three when his father died, and when his mother passed away a year later, he was put under the guardianship of Pope Innocent III. The kingdom that the previous two generations had amassed crumbled as infighting erupted over the crown. Frederick grew up to speak six languages and developed an interest in culture and philosophy. After being betrayed by Pope Innocent III during his teenage years, 
when the Pope crowned Otto IV of Brunswick Emperor in 1209, the Pope saw Frederick's ambition and influence grow. Pope Innocent III then turned against Otto IV and supported Frederick as King of Germany, with Pope Honorius III crowning Frederick the Holy Roman Emperor in 1220. Perhaps due to the Pope's initial betrayal, Frederick had seen the humanity in the supposed divinity of the Pope. He developed a religious tolerance that dismayed the papacy and welcomed scholars from Jewish and Muslim faiths into his Sicilian court. After that, Frederick had a tumultuous relationship with the papacy, refusing to aid in the Crusades to Jerusalem. He then horrified the Christian world when he eventually joined a crusade, as he used diplomacy rather than force to negotiate peace. The Pope rejoiced upon his death in 1250, but the power vacuum that Frederick left meant that no one would receive the title of Holy Roman Emperor for a little over 60 years after his death. This period saw great instability throughout Germany and Italy and is known as the Interregnum, meaning between reigns. After the death of Frederick II, there were only five emperors who were officially crowned. The first was Henry VII, who was crowned in Rome in 1312. Henry wanted to restore the position of the emperor to its former glory, but with civil war in Germany and France asserting power, this never came to pass. In 1355, Charles IV ended any further unification ambitions when he said, the king is emperor in his kingdom. He agreed to formally withdraw from Italy, only entering Rome on his coronation day, and he changed the title to Holy Roman Emperor of the German nation. After Charles IV came Sigismund, who was crowned in 1433. By this time, the title was purely symbolic, with no real power behind it. However, the next family to claim the crown of the Holy Roman Emperor were the Habsburgs, who were happy to flaunt any symbols of power that they could. Frederick III of Habsburg was crowned in 1452. The Habsburgs would continue to hold this title, even if they were not officially crowned, until 1806, when Napoleon destroyed the Holy Roman Empire. Thus ended this centuries-old empire that, at times, could not even be described as an empire. The Holy Roman Empire was more German than Roman and only had a very tenuous claim to the label holy. Starting as a grudge against Byzantium, it ended as an empty title to an archaic ideal sought by European rulers since the fall of the Roman Empire. To learn more about the Holy Roman Empire, check out our book, The Holy Roman Empire a captivating guide to the union of smaller kingdoms that started during the early Middle Ages and dissolved during the Napoleonic Wars. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while it's still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.